Thank you. Thank you, Elizabeth. This is Odin Serrano and happy Earth Day, everyone. Uh, I would like to uh, welcome everybody to my presentation on the Countering Wildlife Trafficking Institute. Give you a little bit of background of my hometown here in St. Louis. The issue of wildlife trafficking, the mission of the Counter Wildlife Trafficking Institute, the work that we do with our NGO and government partnerships, as well as universities, and the research partnerships and internships that we provide, what you can do, and a few opportunities for some Q&A. So here's just a quick look. This is my life on a screen, if you will, um, telling a little bit about where I came from. I, came, I'm, I grew up in St. Louis here. I'm here in Brentwood, Missouri. Uh, I went to school in Webster Groves. I had to do a shout out to a high school, our high school near Ings Hall. Um, and then I had a variety of different um, degrees that I've earned over the course of my life, beginning with mathematics and then working into my master's and PhD in environmental science and policy. But my career has been primarily in environmental um, issues, beginning first at NASA at Kennedy Space Center, working on the shuttle program there, but had a keen interest in uh, the wildlife that surrounded the area. And then I went to NASA headquarters as an environmental program manager working on a variety of opportunities for collaboration with multiple um, agencies while in Washington. And then uh, I moved back to St. Louis after 13 years at NASA and began my career at the National Geospatial Intelligence Agency as an intelligence analyst, as well as um, trying to establish a way that intelligence could be more involved and engaged on environmental issues. I stood up the environmental geography program that dealt with climate security, water security, food security, and ecosystems and security, and therein led me to my um, work as the first community uh, intelligence community lead for combating wildlife trafficking. And I was really excited about that opportunity under the appointment of director at the time of the Director of National Intelligence, James Clapper, um, who asked me to help bridge between NGOs work in the field with federal government um, stakeholders. And it was a variety of stakeholders from law enforcement and conservation stakeholders, but also now leaning into the topic of wildlife trafficking and security. And I'll talk to you about that in just a moment. So after my 13 years working with NGA, I um, was then reti I retired from the federal government and I started my own organization dealing with wildlife trafficking. And it became apparent to me because of all of the broad issues associated with wildlife trafficking and really wanted to dedicate my time to this, um, to this cause. This is just a snapshot of several species that are um, at risk of extinction due to poaching and um, illegal trade. And most notably, you'll notice on this slide on the left corner, the pangolins, which are the most believed to be the most trafficked mammals on earth and are also being correlated to COVID ID um, so, or COVID-19 uh, as a potential origin of source. So uh, I'll let you absorb some of this, but the main issue, issue here is that this is a broad issue, both marine and terrestrial, that we need to get our hands around, and we have to do so in partnership with our um, colleagues at all different levels. If you'd like to know more about some of these facts, please visit the um, Association of Zoos and Aquariums. The link is below. So I then began my own organization, the Country and Wildlife Trafficking Institute, primarily to focus on what I could do from St. Louis, um, dealing with my mapping background, as well as government engagement background, and understanding the issues correlated to intelligence felt that there was an opportunity for me to help bridge our work through geospatial analytics. And it was then that um, we also engaged with our um, universities in dealing with research partnerships as well. So those are our two main pillars and I'll talk to you about just those two in just a moment. So uh, yeah, let's first begin with our 
pillar one, which is the geospatial analytics component. And it's here where we're dealing with data standards and tailored collections and satellite imagery and all kinds of different um, capabilities that help us to understand what the issues are and how we can address wildlife trafficking. Um, but my primary focus has been with the Chinguetta Wildlife um, organization who works with rangers in the field and we develop geospatial analytic products. Those are map products that help rangers to understand where poaching is occurring, where hotspots are occurring, so that they can do their part on the front line. Uh, but then we also lean to the other end of the spectrum, which is uh, artificial intelligence, machine learning data models, all that pertain to sort of deep learning experiences. And I'm partnering most closely with the St. Louis University's GeoSLU Geospatial Institute run by Dr. Vasit Sagan. And I'll tell you a little bit about some of our modeling and what's on the horizon next in a, in a few slides here. So let me focus on our daily, daily ops tempo. As I mentioned, my primary NGO partner is Chingata Wildlife. He was the one that I work with right from the onset of my retirement. Uh, he works primarily in Africa. And here are a list, excuse me, here are a list of all of the different partnerships that he engaged with, with which made it that much more intriguing because of the breadth and scope of the work that we could provide. So he works again with the frontline rangers to help mentor and train them on how to collect information that is relevant to anti-poaching operations. But he also has a broader vision that is inclusive of four major components of his portfolio. The first is this anti-poaching operational support in the field. As I mentioned, um, he's there. This is a photo of them showing some training techniques that employ humanit humanitarian um, practices to keep all perpetrators and entities safe we often we recognize that poachers themselves are often the victims uh, the second domain is the investigations liaison unit and it is here where we work with law enforcement um, components as well as intel agencies to help understand okay of the evidence that we provide how can we help the law enforcement um, mission achieve its goal we also have a canine unit um, that does our work in the field helping to the rangers to identify not only um, ivory but also weapons and drugs and other illicit goods that are being trafficked. The third domain uh, is headed up by Dr. Carolyn Jost Robinson who is uh, noted there on the left. She works at the at the community level doing her advanced social cultural research where she brings into um, effect what is going on in the community. Are they aware of the issues associated with poaching and how can we assist them with their health and um, prosperity issues in a sustainable way. And then the fourth domain is my geospatial analytic um, aspects of our work that we do on the analysis and modeling. And I'll tell you a little bit about our team and what we provide in more detail next. Uh, the, the primary workflow when you're working in the, with the rangers in the field is to collect information. You'll see on the left, that's a view of what they see on their phone to collect information. It's in French. We bring that information into a map. This is a map showing hotspots of where hot, uh, poaching events, excuse me, where poaching events are occurring. And they can then base their, uh, their work on, against those hotspots to see, okay, what are the targeted areas that we need to go after to keep uh, boots on the ground in these very critical zoned areas where poaching is rampant. Then we take that information that then helps bigger, broader issues. How is poaching correlated to other threats such as the trafficking of other species, uh, guns, drugs, and even humans in some instances. And this is where we get into more of the modeling of all of these um, multivariant solutions. Uh, here's a quick look. I don't have time today to deal with um, the real details of our mapping work. You're welcome to contact us and I'll give you the insight of where, how you can learn more about our mapping work at the end of this. But this is a rendition of um, 
a what we call a common operating picture. Laura Roy, our senior analyst, put this piece together for us that looks at these multiple variables, all these different um, widgets that they can use in the field, um, and then helps to understand the metrics of, associated with what they're finding. This particular view is with a partnership that we conduct with World Wildlife Fund in the Zanga Zanga Protected Area Reserve in Central African Republic. And uh, we're looking here at the, that conglomerate of color um, of multiple variables. One is elephant movement. We've got poaching incidents in the red. The purple points there represent um, poacher camps. The yellow points up here at the top of the, of the schema is um, illicit diamond mining. So we've got a lot of different things happening all in the same view and we need to do our work to figure out what's, uh, how we can help the rangers do that and the conservationists do theirs. Okay, so, so the second pillar is our research partnership component. And here is where we're working with universities and other NGOs to kind of harmonize um, disparate research activities, help provide internship opportunities, and also develop deeper um, independent research in some instances, PhD programs. Kevin Wells is one of our PhD students who works with us, who's now uh, pursuing his PhD at St. Louis University. And so it's, an, and as is uh, Giselle Cota, who's also getting her graduate degree. So their work is based on, uh, their development of their um, academic program was based on their work with the internship uh, with CWTI. So we're really proud of the people that we bring together through our university partnerships. Here's a quick look at some of our um, constituents that we work with in the university realm. We are working um, with Washington University here locally and Maryville, but we also reach beyond the borders um, to Kansas, um, University of Kansas, and then internationally, and, as well as Harvard, and internationally with the University of Geneva and Oxford University. So that's just a sample of universities who've engaged with us on a variety of topics. We're really proud to have that in place. But uh, most recently, we've devised a plan to kind of solidify our research arrangement through the GeoSLU initiative, where we'll be partnering a uh, putting together a CWT countering wildlife trafficking research initiative. So the heart of collaboration will happen with GeoSLU coming in the near future. So why is this so relevant right now, as you've seen, of course, in the news, everything about COVID correlations of wet markets. Wet markets are those markets that sell live products, live animal goods, um, often are illegally trafficked um, wildlife in these wet markets. And so there are positive correlations between coronavirus and wet markets. And so here's just a sample of some of the posts that came out uh, back in February when we first were hearing about it. So I keep a close tab on um, the latest science that's coming out and the evidence associated with it. So if you follow me on LinkedIn, you'll see some of the work that we, um, that I promote through other people's research. Um, Sarah Walker, the Senior Advisor on Wildlife Trafficking from the AZA, has a campaign to help educate um, uh, general public on some of these issues, a really good place to start as far as familiarizing yourself with the science. So because of that correlation to human health and medicine development, uh, GeoSLU has devised a, uh, an approach that for two, two aspects, two key aspects. One is remote sensing drone research to assess with biodiversity, working maybe with those like NASA and NOAA to help us contribute our work here in St. Louis. And then also we're forging a new uh, platform that has the convergence of health, security, environmental policy, and wildlife trafficking. Looking at it through different lens, but through an integrated view can give us more insight on how these things uh, respond to one another and how we can work more collectively on these issues. And here's St. Louis, right in the middle of it all. Countering wildlife trafficking has been a real key focus um, in the past couple of years, ever since. Actually, I came out of the, 
I retired from NGA and found myself right smack dab in the spotlight of the geospatial ecosystem kind of emerging as um, a global resource for anyone who's dealing with mapping. That's what I mean by geospatial. It's anything that has to do with uh, maps and or analysis thereof. So Director Cardillo, retired now from NGA, is a leader in stimulating that, um, that ecosystem right before he retired and is dedicated to the growth of it after. Uh, also, we're partnering with the United Nations Association here in St. Louis. That's um, Honorable Russ Carn Carnahan, who his uh, House of Representatives, who is helping us to carry the, the flag on counter wildlife trafficking on the Hill. Uh, contact Carlos Suarez if you'd like to join the UN Association of St. Louis and get involved with global healthy planet initiatives. Again, there's Dr. Bassett Sagan, who's kind of forging the way, being the GeoSlu lead, standing up this partnership of our research um, to co-develop for a broad uh, array of users. I'd like to also mention Dr. Rosalind Nor Norman. She started this Gateway GIS program. It's a K through 12 program in St. Louis, and we were fortunate enough to work with her and bring in two high school students um, from Clyde C. Miller this past spring. And so uh, she's been instrumental in getting the youngest generation on the board on board with geospatial science and then most recently NGA National Geospatial Intelligence has um, sponsored an artificial intelligence challenge it was a six-month sprint with universities and CWTI helped to shape that event and so a special thank you to all of those listed Dr. Ho, Rachel Jones, Meredith Gore, GeoSlu, Esri and the entire NGA team in helping to put together this novel approach for students to crowdsource this issue and a special congratulatory um, wish to Maryville University as the A artificial intelligence challenge winners for this um, event. And then I'd like to close with what we're doing here with um, the zoos. Uh, we'd like to make sure that we get the, the word out, but this is a sensitive topic for some. And so we decided to um, come up with an augmented reality approach where you see if you were at the zoo, this is a sample of how it would be portrayed. You have a blank screen of, will you miss me? And then when you put your phone up to, um, so you have kids there, so it's not too, too, much a heavy of an issue because you're there to have fun and you don't want to necessarily be um, troubled by some of these this this message but it is an important message nonetheless and so what we've done is you put your phone up to the qr code and it would appear a message as you would in front of that particular species in this case the elephant to give you um, the, the statistic of what is happening with the elephant and then learn a little bit more about what you can do as an individual to help um, stop wildlife trafficking. So here are five little actions that I came up that maybe you could do today to help um, right there from our our own homes as we are in quarantine. Um, the first would be to get educated on the issues of wildlife trafficking and illegal trade. Read, follow, read up on these issues, follow me on LinkedIn and others. Um, there's so much that is happening on a daily basis. Contact GeoSlu, learning about this multidisciplinary um, security issue potentially as a degree. Um, also create your own list of articles and references and, and catalog them and maybe contact me and I can show you how we can build out this repository for holistic research. Um, another is to create a social media campaign to educate our next generation of leaders who are going to be helping us to stop this issue. And so some messages like stop Chinese, traditional Chinese medicine, stop wildlife trade in wild, wet markets, stop uh, wildlife pet trade. There's a lot of campaigns that are out there, but there's never enough voices to help spread the word. It's also important to promote good news stories. I just read a National Geographic piece um, that talks about the wins of our, of our efforts. So also to showcase those um, success stories. Create an awareness campaign for your friends and family to help understand the issue and using the AZA's toolkit to do so. Um, they give you ingredients on how to 
to set that up. And then maybe give to your time and or funding, maybe a generous donation uh, gift to your favorite organization that has this conservation issue. And then I'm sure, um, as I mentioned, Chinketa Wildlife is um, a favorite NGO model for me because of its holistic approach and harnessing all of these aspects into one um, perspective. And then, of course, you can add your ideas here. So here's... Um, what I'd like to close with, be sure to visit the nature and wildlife experience area. Here you'll see two videos, short videos, one of the uh, last animals by Kate Brooks, a, a riveting story about um, bringing together wildlife with intelligence and the frontline work that is being done on rhino poaching. And then Chingetta Wildlife has a four minute YouTube video on their work in the field. I also am thankful to Don Robertson who made me a birthday gift of, uh, which happens to be on Earth Day, of Will You Miss Me When We're Gone video. It's on YouTube. It's in, in the youth corner of the Earth Day page, but it's intended for all audiences to sh talk about the severity of the issues and what we can do about it. So here I'd like to close with a special thanks to our team. I'd like to shout out one at a time, Kevin Wells, who's our program manager, PhD student at SLU. Uh, Laura Roy, who's our senior analyst, who's been doing some heavy lifting on our geospatial analytics. Will Slayton, who's getting the word out. He attends Washington University as a freshman in his undergrad study is environmental science and economics, built a, uh, an education piece for students at Washington University um, that can be scaled up to multiple universities. Giselle Cota, who's been working for CWT the longest, she's done all, all of the geospatial analysis work for our um, projects thus far in the Congo Basin, and she's again wor working on her graduate degree. Bringing on Fez, who has just joined us as the lead for the Maryville team winners for artificial intelligence with the NGA uh, contest. Uh, I'd like to shout out Mike Kleckner from 90 Degree West, who's helped us with our visualization, Dustin Turpin on our web design, and our Gateway GIS high school students, Adam and Jordan. Here's all of the contributors from the collaboration at the university. And finally, a special shout out to Matt Woodleaf at Esri for all of his support in helping us. Esri is the software product that we use for our mapping. So that concludes my talk. How am I on time? Four minutes left. Okay, great. So thank you all for your time. It's a special day for me um, celebrating this 50th anniversary. And I'd like to spe especially thank the organizers for pulling this together. Elizabeth, you did an amazing job. Thank you so much for all of your help. Um, are there any questions there out in the field that I can field for you? And Elizabeth, I think you might have had one the other day that you were considering. Do we see wildlife trafficking in the U.S. from um, okay. someone at Earth Day? Through social okay, society? so do we see wildlife trafficking in the United States? Yes, we do. We see not only products um, that are being trafficked that were originated from um, Africa and other places around the world, like uh, birds, um, captured in the rainforest, the Amazonian rainforest, uh, as well as rhino horn being trafficked right through Missouri. So yes, we see exotics live and poached animal parts being um, trafficked through the United States. Um, we also have our own animals that have uh, that are being trafficked the black bear to name one um, there are tortoise being um, harvested out of Florida as another so yes it is happening here in the United States uh, both as the trafficking mode as well as an origin okay, another else? question does wildlife trafficking have connection to human trafficking does wildlife trafficking have connection to human trafficking? Excellent question, probably the million dollar question. Um, we have research that is going on right now in concert with those that manage just the human trafficking um, model as well as the wildlife trafficking model. Um, there is evidence that is showing that networks that move any illicit 
product, humans, drugs, weapons, and wildlife are all, they all converge at some point. And um, I'm not going to give you explicit, yes, it can, it is happening and who that individual or individuals may be, but there is a whole group that studies the convergence of illicit trafficking. So yes, there is definitely positive correlations to that, um, to those all things trafficked. Anyone else? I think we're coming to the conclusion of our talk. So again, thank you so much, everyone. Please reach out to CWT institute.org if you have any more uh, comments or questions I'd be happy to plug you in I'll be providing this briefing to um, to 365's website and happy Earth Day everyone thank you so much for sharing